What's up, everybody? Podcast number 14, wide open. Yeah. Coming at you. I don't, hopefully, I don't have to tell you. My name is Chris Brandt. And I'm Ross Robinson, but here we are. But here we are. As you can see, for those of you watching on YouTube, we have not done anything with our brand new studio that's in the <laughs> closet of our storage room. The dungeon. We have a, a, we had one, we had one idea. So maybe we might go down that path, but. We don't know. Come on, Wenzel, get me a sign. <laughs> he told me just like he's like dream up some artwork. I'm like, so I got to figure we got to figure something out there. All right, we'll do it. Um, all right, so we're gonna dive in. The um, we just keep getting asked, so yeah. we got to do it. Yeah. Um, I think I get m- multiple messages every week talk asking about suspension, and we have we dove into it uh, just a little bit. In one of our earlier podcasts, and uh, I said, we're going to dedicate a whole one. So here we go. Um, And so we're going to talk about, we had a great question the other day. Uh, Why do you take off the stock shocks and spend a bunch of money and put new shocks on? So we're going to dive into that, but we're also going to talk about um, for guys where it's not in their budget to do suspension, yeah. How, how, what's what's the best settings for my stock stuff? So let's kind of start there. Um, and I guess I'm gonna I'm, my expertise lays in the Polaris side of things, so I don't I'm not that great on anybody else's stuff. But this the principle still applies. I, yeah, I believe the basic geometry and how the sled will react depending on what you do is relatively the same. Yep. So let's let's um, let's talk about a, a mountain sled. Um, that's that's what I'm gonna talk about. I'll, I'll cover the snowcross sleds. Okay, perfect. <laughs> no uh, idea what I'm talking. <laughs> okay, um, there's there's th- three goals as we mountain ride. Yeah. Um, be efficient with your movements. So because we're riding in hard conditions at elevation and a bunch of things are trying to get us stuck. So we want to be efficient. Uh, we get on edge many hundreds of times a day. And when we talk about being on edge, that's counter steering, getting up on one ski, traversing across something that is not flat. So we want to anything that we can do to make that easier, uh, is better. And then when you get on edge, we want to stay on edge. We don't want to fall it down and then end up in the creek or end up down in the trees. So maintaining edge is a really important thing. And then um, third is is we want to we want to be on top of the snow, not down in the snow. So those are those are the three things that I look at that suspension has a big effect on when we're riding. And uh, so let's talk about the. The stock suspension. Yeah. Okay. So mm-hmm. we have now we have three different packages or levels on the Polaris. We have the stock monotubes. Uh, we have the clicker shocks, and now with the chaos, we have the new velocity series shocks that have um, high speed and low speed compression adjust. Okay. Um. All right. And so the the question I get most of the time is. Here's my rider weight. What should I do? Or how do you set your stock sleds up? Yeah, what's the setup Yeah, on stock? And uh, this answer it's, is pretty bad for me. Yeah. So, um, Ross, go ahead and ask me. So I have a stock sled, uh, Chris Chris Brandt, all powerful. What do I do? Um, how do I set it up to be for it to work the best in the backcountry? Okay, well... Uh, I get my sled from the dealer. I put the bars in the neutral position. I put some weights in it and I ride it. Yeah, (laughs) I know. (laughs) Yeah. Um, What about, yeah. And even with the clickers, right? Like the monotubes, then there's certainly not much to touch. Really. You only have one adjustment in the monotubes and that would be your spring. spring. And okay. So that was my, my smart ass answer. Um, Most of the time on a stock based sled, I don't really change much, right. um, but let's let's dive in it just a, a little bit more, just so we can entertain the folks. Yeah. I'm and I'm 160 pounds, so it doesn't. I mean, a 300 pound guy or 250 pound guy, that is a little different. Brands backcountry adventure. What can we help you with? Oh, we gotta 
Should we start taking live calls on customers that don't even have? Hey, it's Fox. How funny. <laughs> they they knew we were doing a podcast about them today. Yeah, they heard. Yep. Um, okay. So um, for me, again, talking about those three things that we want, get on edge easier, maintain edge, get up on top of the snow. I like a front end that's really soft. When it's really soft, it allows the sled to tip up and get on edge. So the front ski shocks, in my opinion, are already pretty dang soft. They don't have a ton of preload on them. So I don't, I don't on the stock monotubes, I leave them about where they are. Right. Okay. 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 Um, in the rear, this is where you can you can make a a pretty big gain or a pretty big difference with just a little bit of spring preload. Um, it doesn't take much. Uh, in the rear, if you want the sled to get up on top and keep the front end down, you would add a little preload. And when I say a little, a quarter inch of preload goes a long way on a spring rate. Quarter inch of threads, adding Co- threads or, or not, tightening, yeah, tightening, that tightening down. the spring. Um, so that's that's one that's one thing. Mm-hmm. For I get asked even more than how do I set my set my suspension properly, the question should be how do I set my sled up improperly to do wheelies? Yeah, I I get that a lot as well. Softening the rear spring will make the sled want to lift the front end a little bit more and can give you a little bit more of that playfulness. But you also without valving, you're going to be softer. You're going to go through the stroke further um, and the there's the risk of, of bottom out and, and all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, w- and when we're talking, we're talking right now, we're talking rear, rear shock. C- correct. Yeah. yeah. That's a, that's a good point. Um, not this, not the front track shock or the center shock. We call it the front track shock. Yep. But, but going to that front track shock for me, what, what is happening as I see it, as we're going in the snow is you want that front track shock to collapse, to help bring the sled up on top of the snow. The reason that the chaos, let's use the yeah. chaos as, as an example, okay. uh, is very light and wants to wheelie is, well, A, we have a longer front track shock. We have a steeper approach angle of the rail tip and then a longer limiter strap. So what that is doing is that is taking pressure off of the front end and, and basically changing the attitude of the snowmobile versus being on the front, it's now being on the back. So take your, when you're standing, instead of standing on your toes, lean back a little bit, you're standing on your heels. That's the difference between a chaos on a pro. The, the pro is on its toes, yeah. right? It's, it's got more ski pressure, but it wants to go forward. It wants to take that front end and it wants to go forward. On a chaos, the, it, you rock back a little bit, changing the geometry, and the chaos is is a lot lighter front end feeling, and wants to wants to bring the front end up. I think they did a good job managing that. It's not yeah. crazy, but um, so the general rule for me in the rear suspension, as soft as it can be in the front track shock to get up on top of the snow, a little a quarter inch of preload in that rear to to keep me going forward. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Um, so minor adjustments, very, very, very minor. Yeah. I, I mean, we just talked like literally I'm adding a quarter inch of preload. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's my preferred setup on a stock sled f- with the monotubes. Now let's, now let's go to, they have a, the next line is the, the clicker shocks. Yep. And on the, on the Polaris clicker shocks, you have a compression adjust. Uh, on the rear track shock and then the two ski shocks. And they they do make a difference, uh, which is good. You can, uh, letting the screw out softens it, driving it in, stiffens it. For a lot of guys, they'll do that upgrade to give them a little bit more bottoming resistance in the rear. And the good thing about being able to change, have an adjustment, being able to change compression is it allows you to keep the spring rate where it, it in a in a softer state because I like comfort mm-hmm. I like um, I like a, a not a stiff feel I like a soft easier to ride because I'm I'm not a big dude and I want the sled easy to manipulate and one of the ways that I talk about that is uh, with suspension you can talk about it soft 
or stiff, but I think of it as fast or slow. Mm -hmm. The chassis will act fast when you are set up very soft. It wants to just move around and be busy. I like that feel unless the snow is deep. If the snow is deep, I want to slow the chassis down or stiffen, which gives you the, you have the ability to do that with these clickers fairly easy. So that's, um, I would keep spring rates soft and then adjust with, um, with compression. And when you add the, when you add the clicker shocks to the equation, you're not, you have that compression adjustment. So when you just crank springs, it feels springy because you don't have the, you don't have the valving in the actual shock to back up what you're adding to it with spring. So it kind of just like, that's right. I don't know. It can feel funny. It, 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 yeah. A, a springy sled uh, is reacts very fast. The, the rate of the shock is increased, so, which makes it um, fast and stiffer and just, it's not a great feel. It's, yeah. It doesn't inspire a ton of confidence. That's why we talk about, that's why you said it's very small adjustments. Yeah. Right. Not like ramming it all the way down because it's going to really be weird. Yep. Um, and then let's go to the two players premium line. It's their new velocity series shocks, which is really cool to see players bring these shocks out. Um, they, it's been, it's been needed in, in the RMK line and it is, it is exclusive to the chaos. A lot of guys are, um, have reached out to us and, um, wanted to, it wasn't quite in the budget to go to the Fox stuff. Takeoff velocities are a great addition to, uh, an RMK and or guys wanting to turn their RMK into a chaos yeah. as well. Um, a couple things that they have, they have uh, position position sensitive uh, technology inside their shock, which is really cool. Uh, they also have both high speed and low speed compression. Now, I will say because um, we have been down this road on the Fox side, we have had um, high speed, low speed, rebound, air pressure, all of this stuff, right? About six adjustments. Yeah, <laughs> and it's great when you know when you can wrap your head around what is actually going on there, but it can also, you can also make the snowmobile um, worse with, with those settings. And so understanding what a high speed compression event and a low speed compression event and, uh, and being able to, to tune on that can be, can be challenging. Um, And so I haven't got to play a ton with the chaos stuff right now clickers are in the middle um i will say that when we were on our fox stuff when we had that same high speed and low speed compression on my low speed stuff i i had it almost about as soft as possible because i really liked the comfort side of it yeah um but it's funny though if you go if you go too soft um what's called packing can happen. And what packing is, is that suspension, uh, you hit a bump and it, it goes through the travel. And then, and a lot of the time, this is a rebound event too, but um, compression, uh, rebound is also affected by compression and vice versa. So adds another complexity to yeah, it. Yeah. Um, but the, you know, the general rule is I want, I want my, I don't want it to bottom out, but I want it to be plush. And so, um, finding that balance with those clickers can be a little challenging, but totally doable. Um, I think the suspension, the way it comes is really close. I've ended up adding more spring preload in the front ski shocks to, because there's, there's so much weight taken off of it in my slow going uphill, kind of needing to turn on two skis. The sled seemed like it had no ski pressure at all and it kept wanting to push. So I stiffened some, the ski pressure to help hold down on the snow just a little bit more to give me a little more bite. Um, and in the rear, uh, with a chaos, especially you're trying to control the wheelie that's, yeah. and, and again, I don't want you guys to think like this thing just won't go anywhere and it's just wheeling and it I, everywhere. Right. But. And I think that's rider preference as well. Cause we're talking about, we're talking about you cause you're the, mm-hmm. that was the whole topic with the chaos was can't, what can we go get done in the trees with this thing? Yeah. We know it's going to be fun. So balancing that and, and 
being able to go get some more stuff done yep. with him. Yep. Um, and then they also have in the rear. So so we kind of talked covered the front ski shocks a little bit. Uh, in the rear, they also have that those adjustments on both the front track shock and the rear track shock. So it's really cool that they that they have the adjustability. Um, trying to figure out on, from, on the consumer side what fits the type of riding they do. And that's the other thing, too. I get the question a lot, like, how should I set my suspension up? But I have no idea what you're riding, how you're what your agendas are, what your snow's like, what the terrain, your definition of mountain riding is different than mine. And so there's not just one turnkey answer. And that brings us full circle to why why we have Fox suspension. Yeah. Um, and why, and it's taken so many years to, to get to this point pretty insanely good place we are with shock stuff right now um because of all of the things that we're talking we that we're talking about on the stock stuff here's what is happening with the stock suspension that for me isn't working and i go back to those three things that i want my sled to do i want it to get on edge once i get on edge i want it to stay on edge and i want to not get stuck i want to go forward yeah um and that's strictly 100 percent um how and why the tune in in the brand edition shock is is what it is and it's very specialized and i we talked about this in the first podcast uh when we briefly touched on suspension but players has a very tough job they have a they have to set up a suspension for all of these different use demands where i am not my focus is not that my focus is very narrow off trail performance. Yes, my stuff is works really good on the trail, um, which is a, a, a benefit and a bonus. But more importantly, I think about how many hundreds of times I'm going to counter steer and get up on my ski. If I can reduce the effort by even 10% times a couple hundred times a day, we're, we're, I'm going to be I'm going to have more energy. My sled's going to be easier to ride, all of that stuff. So again, that's how I look at it when I'm setting up my suspension. And so you guys heard um, talking about compression and there's high speed and low speed and then all of this stuff, right? And so we went down that road um, a few years ago and we had all of these adjustments and all it really did is it just confused people and, and then it scared people away from using the adjustments, yeah. which is a bummer. Right. That's what, that's, that's, that was why there was such an advantage in buying it because you, there was adjustability and our conditions change not only throughout the year, but, but really throughout the day. Um, I mean, you look at Ross, look at what we do in a day, right? Right. What we unload. Yeah. We got a six mile bumpy, bumpy trail going in. Yeah. And then once we get off the bumpy trail, then we analyze what the heck's going on with the snow, the type of train we're going to be riding that day. What what type of day? Are you going to be teaching all day? Are you going to be in Narville all day? Um, and then you get back on the six-mile bumpy trail, and, and we go back home. And so to, to think to, that you could have one suspension set up for all of those different use demands, I mean, you're all you're doing is compromising or sacrificing in one area um, – it's just so it's good in all areas. Yeah. And so that was our that was our biggest thing is we wanted to have the adjustability, which we had. We had high speed, low speed, we had two air chambers, we had rebound. rebound. Reddit, yeah. Yeah. So we had all of these things, but it was like you had to be a mad scientist to understand it yeah. and, and not screw it up. And to change it you had to at the least have, you know, wrench and um, a, a screwdriver to change it, adjustment, rebound, all these things, and then yep. if you're going to start messing with air pressure, I mean, it's a whole mess of stuff. Yeah, and I, we, and and then that, and then that's not fun, right? <laughs> we're not then we're not snowmobiling. Yeah, then we're getting tools out and working on our snowmobile, and so yeah. that the, and this was many years ago, and so um, our direction now and currently is, um, 
we have uh, we have what's called the QS3 switch. Um, and so, again, let me just circle back. We are talking now. Why do you take off the stock suspension and spend a bunch of money and put Fox F on? And so, um, with with our shock package, and I'll uh, I'm I'm gonna touch I'm gonna touch base on the. QS3s. Yeah. Um, I think that's 80% of our customers kind of go that route. It's like the flagship yep. kind of. Yep. And so what the QS3 is, is it is literally a switch um, that's on the shock, both the ski shocks and the rear track shock with a very simple one, two, three, or soft, medium, and firm for the ski shocks. And then in the rear, we have a really cool feature, which is, which is I think they were literally built for the chaos uh soft medium and on number three instead of being firm it's what we call lockout um and lockout is you just that's your go get it done yeah let's go up yeah it's we're going up yeah yep yeah. Lock- and, and, and it's not rock it's not locked out correct because then you break things but it's yeah. it's severely stiffer yeah it's like three four Maybe five, <laughs> like yeah, yep. Yeah. But but again, the the reason that we have lockout is all the things we talked about. Is I want um, if if your sled is soft in the rear, it wants to pick up the front end. If your sled is stiff in the rear, it wants to keep the front end down. And so, um, what's really cool is you literally. So we do our six mile trail right in, and I think it's funny. I run everything on one going in. Yeah, you do not. Right, I run everything on two. Yeah, you you yeah. run on two, yeah. just different riding. I'm in the front, you're in the back. You know, so yeah. some of those dynamics. Yeah. And I I was actually going to bring this up with this package is the fact that you and I run the same air pressure, mm-hmm. but we and we ride very similarly. But then we have a little we have differences when we ride, and all it is is a a click on the shock to change that. Mm-hmm. Well, and that, and I guess that was the point I didn't get to yet was, I mean, in the matter of getting off your snowmobile in 15 seconds, you can make your snowmobile, um, chassis wise, soft or stiff or fast or slow. Right. Right. And so after my six mile bumpy trail, I have all my clickers in one and I get out there and it's a deep day. And if I leave everything on one, the sled is very easy to override. Because it is reacting so quickly. Again, it's soft. So it's like rolly and going back to the, the three things. I want to be on edge. I want to stay on edge. And I want to get. So when it's soft, it's easy to get on edge. And I think one of the one of the, the coolest things when I get, let someone ride a Fox Shock for the first time is when we go on one of those hills that's been beat up and it's destroyed and, you know, it's or hard tracks or obstacles on the hill. And that's the biggest thing I notice is when you're cutting across that stuff that the R suspension does not want to set you back down on two skis. It wants to stay up on one ski. And that's, I think as we teach and we watch people, that's people's biggest struggle is they don't necessarily have trouble getting up on edge, it's maintaining the edge and not falling down and going down into the trees and all of that stuff. And so the reason that we're able to to be more successful on the staying edge part is a couple things. One, we have two air chambers. And so let's just break down this shock real quick. Yeah. Okay. We mm-hmm. have we have a main a, main air chamber, which is so think guys, think of um, I'm gonna make this very simple. Uh, air is a spring. Okay, so uh, we have two air chambers or, or two springs. So we have dual rate spring technology, but without the weight of a spring, which is cool. Yep. And then air being a spring with we have an infinite amount of adjustability. So if we want a 75 pound spring or an 80 pound spring or a whatever, it's very easy. We just adjust that with our pump. And so what what we have a baseline of the air pressures. And so you don't have to on the hill, you're not getting your air pump out and adjusting anything. The air pressures are there to get set your base. And then we adjust with the compression um, and sometimes the rebound. And that's, what's really nice. And so 
being able to have dual rate technology without the the weight of the springs is really great. So um, that big main chamber or our big spring that controls ride height and our initial comfort. And then the smaller air chamber or our smaller dual rate spring is for our bottoming resistance. And what's really nice is um, d- depending on the pressures and I've spent countless hours and logged s- so many miles trying to figure all of this out yeah. um, is you can change the rate at which it, it bottoms. You can have it get stiffer earlier or later in the stroke. I want it to be later. I want to have a lot of comfort in that initial again, because it helps me roll and get up on edge. And then, um, and then I just, I, I love the fact of, you know, I remember <laughs> we were on the climb backcountry t- team ride last year uh-huh. and we, I had Keith behind me, uh, Keith Curtis. So we roll up to this, you might know him. <laughs> we roll up to this deal and I'm looking up. I'm like, Oh mm. my gosh, mm. we need to try to get up that. And I jump off my sled. I reach down and I put my suspension and lockout. And Keith's like, what are you doing? I'm like, don't you worry about it, bud. Because <laughs> um, that's, I mean, that's why I love adjustability. Yeah. As I, for the other stuff we were doing, I wanted to be wheeling in and having fun and doing hopovers and all of that stuff. Yeah. But when it's time to go get it done, I stiffened my front ski shocks. I went to two and I went to lockout in the rear. And my sled went from a happy, like light in the front end wheeling in sled to we're keeping the front end down and we're going up and i i think that is is and there's no there's no thinking about it no do you want it to go uphill or do you want it to wheelie if you and it's it's yeah. it's it's one switch one button yeah. and, and and you're done and so that's i mean that's that's why I take the stock suspension off yeah. is I, I don't have that ability um, with, with the stock setup. And so I'm able to throughout the day figure out what type of riding I'm doing and, and make my sled do that job well. Yeah. And I like that. And then there's no excuses of why I got stuck. Um, uh, and this happens a lot on a 55. Well, I had to let off because the front end was lifting. Yeah. Well, that sucks. You didn't make the line. Yeah. Well, that's what suspension does. Can, it helps put that power to the ground. Yeah. And well, and what's cool also too about air is even if you do get to the point where you want to change your air pressure, which we, I mean, we do because we're testing so much mm-hmm. and we're trying different things to help get the consumer the best package. But, um, you know, people don't touch their air, but if you ever did get to that point where you wanted to change it, instead of buying new springs or like having to get a full new spring package, you just put air in it. Yeah. And so that's a cool, cool thing that we can adjust, you know, right out of the box. It was without anything. Well, that allows us to, cause we have, I mean, I'm 160 pounds. I had a guy, I just had a guy and that's why one of the reasons that we're talking about this, I had a guy email me last night and said, Hey, I'm 300 pounds. What should I do with the stock suspension? Man, that's a, that's a tough, that's a, a tough bill of order to ask out of the stock skid. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just, it's too soft. Um, and yeah, he could go put a, put a big old spring on there, but then it's just, it, then it's just stiff and it's not compliant and it's not fun. Um, and to your point, that's what we have the ability to do is I'm not going to run. I'm not going to run the same spring as a 300 pound guy. Yeah. Right. 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 And so it's really easy to uh, just adjust, get the baseline setting where he needs it for his weight. I have the baseline setting where I need it for my weight. And then we adjust throughout the day with the real easy clicker. Yeah. And I think part of it too, that, so your, your three, the three reasons that you put or that suspension works, or you want to upgrade suspension or it needs to be good. The lat one of the, the fourth for me would be bottoming out. (laughs) And I think that's goes for a lot of people as well, especially bigger guys. And that's what we have with, 
the Fox, especially the QS3. We have the Evol chamber that is that bottoming resistance, and you which know, you could, and that's what's funny is yeah. the bottoming resistance for a three hundred pound guy. He's obviously going to run more pressure in that chamber, yeah. so it ramps up quicker and gives him more. Um, more more resistance at the bottom of the stroke versus me, and, and and or even you, and you get on my sled and you can bottom it. Yeah, I get on my sled and I don't bottom it. Um, that just proves I'm a lot smoother rider than you, <laughs> of course. Well, <laughs> uh, true, <laughs> um, but but with that, I mean, again, like that's what's so awesome about this suspension is like you can literally fine tune it exactly to what you do and. And we have an infinite amount of adjustability. Yeah. And so that's that's what it's. And let me take that back. It's we have an infinite amount of adjustability, but that's easy to understand. And that's what is going to be a little challenging for these guys with the chaos, with this high speed and low speed stuff. It's funny. We were doing some testing and and we were using the chaos as a baseline for our new uh, chaos Fox package. And I had a sled, a demo sled from Polaris that was at a, it must've been at like the deal, like the op- dealer shows or well, some of the snow shows or yeah. something. And, um, I didn't think to check where the clickers were and we just wrote it. Yeah. And I get, I, I was on mine. I'm like, man, this thing feels pretty good. And I get on the chaos and I was like, man, this thing is terrible. I don't remember it being this bad. And I'm just riding it around. Yeah. I'm like, man, our stuff is awesome. Yeah. This thing is terrible. Well, come to find out, I'm like, we got to, okay, this isn't right. I it's, It was better than this the last time I rode one. And come to find out, all the clickers were like in or out. One, one of the two. Every, everything was turned and someone at the snow show just had a heyday and turned everything yeah. all haywire. Mm-hmm. But to my point, you it can... You can screw it up just as well as you can make it really good. And so once we got it back to where it goes, I'm like, okay, this is, this is normal. Um, but you know, the big advantages are in my opinion is uh, talking about that broad spectrum that Polaris has to try to achieve. Um, small guys, big guys, uh, on trail guys, meadow guys hill i mean every everybody so so they do a good job of putting a shock out that works generally well um in most conditions yeah and for me i'm pinpointing i want my sled to be easier to ride off trail that's it yeah 100 percent. so um and without making the snowmobile twenty five thousand dollars out of the box that's right yep and and that's i think that's the most interesting dynamic that i that i have to talk when i talk to customers about suspension is um because like our qs3 package is 2800 bucks and 2800 bucks is a lot of money to spend on suspension and what's really cool is is at so at the end of the conversation they're like yep that all makes sense. It makes sense to be able to adjust for different snow conditions, different type of terrain, uh, my riding versus your riding. And make, that all makes sense. That's great. Um, and, you know, I tell them, I'm like, uh, we we offer, I, I stand by my product. Yeah. 100% money back guarantee if I can't make this suspension um, work and or that you can't justify the price. And I've been offering that for three years now and I haven't got a set of shock back, which is pretty cool. But better than that is when <laughs> I get the call from the guy two years later, he got, he got his new sled and he's ordering his new shocks. First Be- thing he does. First thing he does. Yeah. And, and I love that he was so skeptical and like, my wife's going to kill me. I can't believe I'm spending this much money on suspension. But after you ride it, and I say this with every product that's expensive or even not expensive, if you're going to spend the money, it better be different. And with a $2,800 product, it better be way different and yeah. way better. Yeah. And um, and this happens to you and I, Ross, all the time. We we get on our on the, the new sleds. We get them out of the crate. We haven't had time to put shocks on or whatever. When we go ride them and break them in, we're like, man, this isn't that bad. This is pretty good. And then we go, then we get on our stuff and it's like, oh my God, I can't. And it happens. We, we say it literally every year, every time it, 
it sneaks up on us and we say, you know, especially that February and the groomer hasn't been out there for freaking three weeks and it yeah. is brutal. Yeah. And we, we get on our sleds and we're just like, we get back to the truck and it's like, can you imagine not having suspension? No. Right? No, 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 no. And, and I, I fall victim to this all the time and it really sucks. I'm in the front and I'm, at, I've got all of these guys behind me that would probably buy shocks if they could ride it. Yeah, but but then you got to let them ride but it. I don't <laughs> want to give my sled up and not have that that plushness and just the predictability and and so it's like so that's why we have now shocks on the fleet sleds. And, yeah. Um. But so so that's the QS3 package. Um. Again, really focusing on easy adjustability. Uh, um. Making it dummy proof. I mean, yeah. do you want it softer or do you want it harder? Mm -hmm. And it's really cool because you can literally just, well, I don't know what I want. Well, just try it. Like turn it and turn it back yeah. and, and see what you like. Um, and then we have the, the premium package, which is uh, some really cool technology and that's the IQS. And so IQS is all of the same features of QS3 except they have this really cool switch up on the handlebar where you don't have to get off your snowmobile. And so it's electronically controlled and everyone's when they hear the word electronic and suspension, uh, oh my gosh, that's got to fail, right? Yeah. How, so there's wires going to every shock. Yeah, there, there is, there's a, but it's a very well thought out, uh, engineered product that has come from the off-road world. That's what Fox, where their background is and where they came from. And what they do now, I mean, they have uh, what's called live valve in the razors, yeah. and, and their mountain bikes have live valve now. Yeah, yeah, it's insane. Uh, so we 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 are in that world right now. We are in the technology world, and um, you know, one of the things that happens with IQS is now I'm not adjusting just a few times a day. I'm just adjusting like fifty times a day because well, the the button is right there. Yeah, and. I go do a, a climb. I just l literally go put it in lockout and I go do the climb and without even looking, I'm coming back down. I put it in one or two or whatever I need. And so you, you end up using the adjustability way more, yeah. um, which is nice. And it's just the same thing as like, um, on the QS three, I have it on soft on the trail. I get to where I'm riding. I'll adjust it probably only one time, one other time I'll yeah. put it in whatever, that I need for the conditions that day. Maybe like if I get to like super crazy zone, I'll go to lockout, but then I'll go back. Um, but with IQS, I mean, I'm hitting that button hundreds of times yeah, through per, the day per line. Yeah. Per yeah. line. Exactly. Yeah. Each line. Cause yeah. each line is requiring something different and what that it. So it stands for intelligent quick switch, right? <laughs> we think, I don't know. I'm sure that ha what else you could it possibly sounded be? really confident yeah. there. So, but, it has its own little brain and mm -hmm. it has so an ECU it has an mm -hmm. ECU. So when you adjust it, it changes the shocks per, you know, one, two or three. So like when you go to three, it doesn't put everything in three or lockout. So, so cor correct. It puts the rear in lockout now. Okay. So there's four settings, four settings. Yeah. Yep. Yep. One, two, three. So soft, medium, firm, just yep. like the QS three. But then the fourth setting, that's, that's the magical one. That's, that's, uh, lockout in the rear puts your front track shock in one to climb up on top of the snow and your ski shocks in two. So we can slow that chassis down a little bit because we're in something kind of gnarly. We're going uphill. Yeah. Right. Um, I mean, it's like cheater mode is yeah. what is what it is. Uh -huh. Right. And uh, I was and it gives us control of our front track shock, which we, you don't have with any other package. Yep. Yeah. So, um, funny thing about this, the IQS is, uh, so we went down to Wolf Creek, an area south of us last weekend, and they had got just dumped on with new snow, but no base. So it was like three feet of sugar, baseless snow. And I was riding, um, I was riding a customer sled that had IQS on and I was on the trail. So I had it in one and then I see this little line. I'm like, Ooh, sweet. And I didn't really, you know, I just didn't think anything I, and I didn't have it in or, or I left it in one and I dropped down and I go and I go up this, this little face, this, and the sled literally just like, like loops out and I don't make it up this hill. 
And I'm like, dang, I wish I would have been in lockout yeah. right there. And yeah. so I make another loop and I put it in lockout. And I mean, it's just crazy to see the difference. Like it, I mean, I literally looped it out and did a re-entry. I put it in lockout and I went over the top of that knoll like at 12 miles an hour. Yeah. You know, like moving. Yeah. And it's that is just awesome to me that I can do that without getting wrenches out without getting off my snowmobile. Mm -hmm. Um, the convenience of it is, is really cool. Yeah. I have one thing that I've been thinking about that should probably be brought up because it always comes in with suspension and we see it a ton here it, at guys that bring their sled is I'm going to, I'm going to take my sway bar off of my, my snowmobile mm -hmm. and what that, especially if you're taking it off with stock suspension, what we see and what we recommend. <laughs> and we have a pretty strong recommendation. Well, and let's, let's talk about why are they wanting to take the stock sway bar off? Yeah. They're wanting to take the sway bar off to, to, um, to succeed at one of those three things, getting up on edge. Yeah. They want the sled to be easier on edge. So the problem with taking the sway bar off to, to do that, will it roll up on edge easier? Yes, it does for sure. But it also sacrifices when you're on that off camber terrain on two skis, the sled is wanting to roll oh, down away from you. Oh my gosh. It's such an annoying feel. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it is, it's requiring way more effort to keep my sled down going across this slope without being on edge. I don't really need to be on edge, but I don't, you know, I got the, the, the terrain or the hills wanting to take me downhill. That sway bar is holding the sled up to go across that flatter. When you take that off, it's wanting to roll down. So again, you know, taking that in consideration, I would rather have a proper suspension setup that makes the sled get up on edge easier uh -huh. versus trying you know taking the sw the sway bar off uh -huh. and i think too that sway that there's some like past sway bar stuff like, uh-huh used to take sway bars off a lot yeah well the sleds. sleds were heavier right. and lower to the yeah. ground and we needed help getting them up on edge uh, yeah mm -hmm. so now it's design tuned calibrated even our fox stuff we test with sway bars on yep and um it just it lends to that rigid chassis feel that we like in the Polaris. That's a really good point. That's that's exactly what we're doing is we're we're maintaining the rigidness so the chassis reacts to what to our rider input yeah. versus the wet noodle. That's what it reminds it, me of. Yeah, I'm like, it's oh pretty gosh, I can't. I can't. And it's too, it's just too soft. And then, in my opinion, it makes the sled feel heavy. Yeah. Taking the sway bar off makes the sled feel heavy when you're just kind of rolling around in the trees and stuff, and it's just got all of this body roll, and it doesn't feel great. It kind of, and then it allows that rear suspension to kind of overpower the front. Yeah, you're like, you're diving into tree wells, and you're you're using a lot more effort. Effort. Yeah. That's right. And all of those things we're trying to do is is use less effort. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So. Yep, suspension is expensive, um, but it's the first thing I do to every sled. Uh, mm -hmm. Every top five list or top whatever list I've ever put out, uh, suspension is at the top. And would I would I rather have power or suspension? Without question, I would go suspension first. And it's hard because us as men, we just want more. A big horsepower. <laughs> we, we need more, but... Um, it's it's not the lack of power that's getting us stuck. It's that um, we're making mistakes on the sled, yeah. which those are some things that are the suspension can can help fix as well, giving you more control, uh, making things easier, you requiring less effort, and so um, that's in a nutshell. I mean, that is that's the the answer to the question. Why why would I take my perfectly good shocks that are on the sled and take them off and put new ones on. And so um, it's to it's to accomplish that goal of having the sled be easier to ride yeah. 
um, being able to have m- more control, having the ability to have adjustability that's easy to understand, and um, in the end, make a huge difference. And I, I think the 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 biggest compliment and the coolest thing for me is that once someone makes the investment in suspension, they can never go back. No. And and I mean that's. And that's what's cool is that not only do they, it's something, and that's, I think that's what's great is, and I hear this all the time of, well, my riding level, I don't think I would feel the difference. Mm. I hear that a lot. Yeah, for sure. And it's like, okay, that's one way to look at it. But, you know, as you're learning, you're you're using way more effort because you don't have exactly the proper technique yeah. and a properly set up or tuned. It's, you know, it's like riding. You wouldn't take a 450 motocross bike and go do single track. Could no. you do it? Yes, you can. Will you die? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I, the, it's not, it's not set up for, and, and I think that's a, that's a good analogy is a 450 hat is a very, use specific bike yeah it is um it is designed for the track can you go ride off trail um or you know single track rocky stuff yeah but it's gonna it's gonna be terrible yeah um will our will the stock stuff work for what you're doing yep it's going to but yeah. there is a, a better solution for, for um if if you have this defined type of riding um, that, well, to be honest, that's what we're, we're all shooting for, yeah, right? We yeah. want to, we want to go, we're going to buy an RMK. We're going to go ride off trail and we want to get into these steep, fun tree lines. Yeah. And, and that's why our stuff works. Yeah. And the whole fact that nobody ever, nobody has returned a set of shocks. No. And that's, you know, you know, that's the, it's the first thing we do. It's the first thing that so many people do. And once we can get people on the shocks is that's when we really see the difference. And uh, suspension is so complicated. You understand it way more than I do. And I understand it more than the average consumer. Um, so what also that you get with the shocks is like all of the R and D and time that we've put into it and no headache. Yeah. Right? We're like, Hey, try put these pressures in there. And how, how often have you told, um, somebody, what pressures they should probably run, and they they'd be like, "Nah, it didn't work." Very, very. It, does, it, it doesn't, doesn't happen, happen, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think you know we. I always use my dad for an example because he's like the perfect. He was like, "I'm not, I'm not spending that kind of money." He's like, he doesn't touch a snowmobile. Finally got him on him a couple years ago. Now every time, better order me a set of shocks. Yep. Because he feels the difference, and he just he's just a go weekend warrior. He's not out there trying to like do crazy stuff but it's that big a difference for him yeah and that i think that's really cool to and i always have i always struggle with this i i want i think of everybody riding where i ride yeah but your your dad is not riding where we ride i tried to get him to where we ride and he almost killed me he almost killed both of us (laughs) (laughs) um but the for him it's it's that same thing like right away or he 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 is not like this crazy gnarly mountain rider yeah but he said you know what i i thought there wasn't going to be a big difference and there and there really is i mean it's it's giant yeah so um okay well i hope that i can't believe that's 50 minutes i know there i don't know how you like cover all of because we could just keep diving into the nooks and crannies of all of it. We we could. Wise. And and so with that, why don't we open this up to, you know, when when we do these podcasts, um, we just we're talking here. I mean, but people are probably thinking, well, I have a question about what you said right there. Yeah. Um, the good thing is, uh, this will be on YouTube, so put your questions or comments below and we'll do our best to answer. You can all always shoot us a message, um, uh, on social media and, or, um, Ross's email. We should, I was just, I was just saying we should open my email to podcast questions. 
I think that's a great idea. Well, it's really easy. Ross at chrisbrandt.com. Yeah. Mine is chris at chrisbrandt.com. So <laughs> send us, just send us um, any questions you have. And we're going to do a little test here. Mm-hmm. We're going to do a test um, to see if anyone's actually listening or if you and I are just talking about suspension by ourselves. Who made it to minute 49? Okay. Uh, yeah, that's a good test. Yeah. So I want to, I want to, we don't, we don't have to discount shocks because we, um, people love them and we sell them. And so we don't really offer discounts, but I'm going to, I'm going to do on here. I'm going to, I'm going to set up a promo code in the store. Um, and the promo code, let's make it, um, Fox podcast will be the discount code. You can go onto our store and enter Fox podcast and I'm going to give you 20% off of shocks. See ya. 20%. I'm going right Ross, now. you might want to buy. <laughs> yeah, I'm buying. Um and again, same deal stands true if it uh if you don't like them or you can't get if I can't get them to work beyond your expectations and justify the investment that you just put in. Um I'll give you your money back and you just send them back and then I'll sell them to Ross at retail. Boom. That's how he makes money off me. Okay. What was it? Fox Podcast. Fox Podcast. F-O-X-P-O-D-C-A-S-T. Okay. No spaces. In- enter that in your when it asks for coupons or discount code on the online store, and you'll get 20% off. So I don't do that very often, and no. I'm only going to do it for like... Uh, I don't know. A limited time. Not very long. Not very long. Let's do, I'm so gonna, if I'm, you're listening to this podcast late, mm, you can try, but good luck. Yeah. We'll see. So I'm going to do it. Um, I'm going to have this available for two days. If you end up stumbling onto this podcast, um, shoot me an email and I will honor it. Ooh, there you go. Because, I mean, if someone's not listening like in two days. Yeah, it's tough. Right. Yeah, these podcasts live for a while. So. Yeah, they live for a while. So if you hear this and you want to do the deal, no, that's what we'll do. I got it. Okay. We're not going to put it up on the store as a discount code. See, now we got these guys roped on for three minutes of yeah, us talking like, about this. Wait, how I should I have thought this out. Yeah. Okay, here's what you're going to do. If you want to do the deal, yeah, you send me an email at chris at chrisbrand.com. I will give you the promo code or take your order over the phone um, for twenty percent off. Yeah, because we want to hear you. We want to. I'm really opening to myself up here because what if ever like what if a lot of people do it? I know. I don't know, dude. That's what you. <laughs> we we just did, talked about it. I didn't think this out no. at all, but I'm gonna do it. Twenty percent off. Fox podcast. Hit me up with an email message, something. Say, hey, I heard you talking about it. Your guys' podcast rocks. I want to sponsor it so you can get a sign. We need a sign. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Hey, I got. I was thinking about. You know what we were gonna do in the in the next podcast? Yeah. We're gonna get Kyle in here. Okay. And we're gonna talk stories. Yeah. At Grizzly Lodge, probably. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's okay. talk about like. I mean, there. The stories are endless with Kyle, but let's talk about some of our favorite, either crap holes we ended up or oh, crazy dude, I, days I, yeah. or let's let's have a fun one with kyle yeah for sure so we're gonna do that for 15 we're gonna be broadcasting that uh from grizzly lodge one of our favorite places to go in the world we leave in like five days for that we thought we'd knock this one out talk about suspension get you guys um all uh all ready for the season so i hope that helped if you guys have questions with what we covered um feel free to hit us up it, it's easy to get a hold of us. Yep. So, yeah. Thank you for listening. Um, thank you for all the reviews on iTunes podcast. And uh, yeah, let us know what else we can do. And we the sh- sharing on stories is great. Um, we're just trying to keep pushing this this thing. So share it, comment it. Thanks for listening. Ross so, Ross told me we had fifty thousand downloads. Yeah, we have we are over fifty thousand downloads. So <laughs> yeah, make awesome. sure you're subscribed because we're gonna we want to keep it rolling. So. Thank you again. Yeah. Thanks, guys. We'll uh, see you next time. And later.